Welcome to chapter 9, the book of 1 Kings. Uh, God speaks to Solomon a second time. A lot of places in this chapter, uh, cities that are going to be mentioned, will have a map, but it begins, and it came to pass as Solomon completed constructing the house of the Lord, which we saw a picture in the last chapter, and the house of the king, and all the matters, uh, pragmatian. Uh, I'll read the first sentence, the verse. K. Agenito os sinatelis a Solomon, eco domise ton icon kiriu, ke ton icon tu vasileos, ke pasen tin pragmatian Solomontos, osa ethelise pise, ke ofthi kirios to Solomonti, to devteron. So he can completed constructing his house and the house of the Lord. Pragmation, we have pragmatic, comes from that Greek word. Uh, in all the matters, as many things as he wanted to do, that Kyrios, the Lord, appeared to Solomon a second time uh, as he appeared to him in Gibeon. Gibeon was fairly close to Jerusalem, a little bit north. And the Lord said to him, I heard your prayer and your supplication. Uh, Prayer is a general, uh, to me, uh, prosev kis, the Greek word is a general communication from man to God. Uh, Prayer. We don't pray to other people. We pray to God only. And it's a communication. And within the prayer can be many things. Um, you can hear it's a supplication, uh, asking for something, uh, uh, health, wealth, uh, solving problems, uh, all, all sorts of supplications that we have, we ask God, it's just innumerable. But then also, um, there's, doesn't mention it here, but in prayer, there's also thanksgiving. And we pray and we thank God for our food when we uh, eat, and we pray, go to bed, pray when we get up, uh, and um, give God thanks for the new day and the day we passed, and thank him for the food. Then uh, there is a praising God where we sing to God, uh, or we can play an instrument to God and lift up our hands and, and lift up our voices to God. That's a form of of a communication of us to him, a prayer. He doesn't pray to us. We pray to him. And then um, there's praising uh, God. Well, that's praising God. Is one of, I'm sorry. Then there's a doing obeisance to God in the Bible many places. People get down on their face uh, and give ob- obeisance, show that they are subservient to a higher authority, whether it be the head of a family or a governor, or a general, and a king, or, and God. We don't do that anymore in the Western world. The Muslims do. Uh, it's a good thing, I believe. And we could do that. Um, Catholic Church, I think they have kneelers, and you get down halfway. Uh, but the prayer. So he says, uh, and the Lord said, I heard your prayer. God hears our prayers. And our supplications, I believe, if our heart is correct, uh, which you beseeched before me. The beseeching uh, is, is sort of the verbal form of the supplication. Now, I sanctified this house. I made it holy, a separate, which you built to establish my name there into the eon. You are building this for it to be always there. And... Uh, My eyes and my heart will be there all the days. Well, that's interesting. Does God have eyes and a heart? He says he does. My eyes and my heart were um, made after the image of God. (laughs) Uh, What God is, man can't look upon him, but is it referring here now maybe to a theophany of a God in having eyes and a heart in the form of Jesus? Uh, I believe that's what it is. 
uh, he's saying, than all the days. Because it says in the New Testament that Jesus is uh, throughout the Bible. It's all about him. And you, Solomon, if you should go before me as your father David went in sacredness of heart, um, being holy, um, separated for God. Uh, and Paul says in Ephesians 4, 2, 4, that we are to put on the new man after our um, repentance. Put on a new man if this is uh, a thing that you need to do is to repent or I, then uh, put on the new man. What, what new man? He says the one according to God being created in righteousness, doing the right thing, and sacredness of the truth, holding the truth. And Jesus says he was the truth. And we are created uh, for sanctifying Jesus in our lives. And uh, in straightness, another word for that would be uprightness. Um, and in uprightness or straightness, to do according to all which I gave charge to him. Here I have straightness because it's sort of a uh, way you're going. And um, to all which I gave charge to him, it could be uprightness. And you should keep my orders and my commandments. It's interesting that this word here, prostagmata um, does not appear in the New Testament, orders. The orders are basically what Moses gave. Uh, God gave to Moses, and Moses gave to the people, the laws. Not mentioned in the New Testament, that word. Commandments are. But which commandments? Well, Jesus says to the people that came to him about the uh, keeping the commandments, thou shalt not kill, murder, and, uh, um, commit adultery, and uh, steal, uh, things like that. But then uh, he uh, gives other uh, commandments. Uh, in John 10, 18, uh, he even says that he was commanded by his father to go to the cross. It was a command. And John 12, 50, uh, it says that uh, the commandments, uh, keeping the commandments, are eternal life equals eternal life, doing the things that God would have us to do. But then uh, he gave us a new commandment. It says in John 13, 34, and that is to love one another. And then in John 15, 10, um, if you should keep my commandments, then um, the eternal life. So if is there, the commands of God. And so God is here is saying the same thing. Uh, if you keep my, uh, should keep, should keep my orders and my commandments, which they didn't, then I will raise up the throne of your kingdom over Israel into the eon. Well, he rose, uh, raised up the throne over the kingdom for a short period of time, but then it fell because Solomon uh, fell into um, sin with... Had, Many wives, well, that wasn't so much the sin, but they led him in, uh, into idolatry. Uh, as I spoke to your father David, saying, There shall not be removed from you a man leading in Israel. A hegemon is a leader. I mentioned that in the last chapter. The hegemon uh, will be in the, new, uh, in the temple of Mount, Mount Maron in Ezekiel, in the, 10th, the last four, 10 chapters and 40. 40 to 49. And then uh, he continues, uh, but if by turning you should turn. Now, it is a possibility to turn away from God. It, it's, all it takes is our volition to want to turn away from God, to go after idols or uh, other things in our lives. So I believe it's the same thing in the New Testament with the Christians. We can turn away from God anytime we want. God is not going to stop us from turning away from him. Uh, we can give up. Uh, the, uh, Peter goes into this in detail. Uh, Peter, or Hebrews, it's in Hebrews, rather, I think. Uh, of turning away, if you turn away, if you have the Spirit of God in you and you turn away. Uh, but if and by turning, you should turn, which he did, you and your children from me, which they did, and my orders, which I put before you, 
which they did change them, so as to not keep them. And you should go and should serve other gods, which all these kings did, almost all of them. That's a four or five good ones. And you should do obeisance to them, bowing down to them. And I look at today, we don't necessarily get down to uh, on a ground to an idol, but we do uh, bow and put our attention towards a lot of things that draw our idols that are not of uh, we have treat them higher than we do God. God takes uh, last place where these other things take first place. And that you'll say, well, what is that? Well, it's whatever we spend our time with. If we spend more time, now I'm not talking about if you're going to work and you work eight hours a day and if you have a family and you're taking care of the children and making supper and all these things. But if the time that you have that's your leisure time, things that you can do whatever you want, you make a choice, if you decide that you're going to sit and watch NFL football and not read the Bible, uh, or if you're going to watch soapbox operas during the day, and I don't know if they even have soapbox operas anymore, but if you do these things and not spend time with God in his word talking to you, then basically it's a form, I see a form of idolatry, although the idol isn't a three-dimensional object like it was then. Then I will remove Israel from the land which I gave to them. Now, he removed other Christian countries, the Byzantine Empire uh, that was uh, in Constantinople and Turkey and Greece and around, around that whole area was very powerful. But it got to be where it was all money, power, and uh, he removed the Byzantines and the Muslims took over that area of land. God will remove people if they change and go walk away from him. I worry about the country that I live in. The United States today is, to me, is most of the people are walking away from God. They don't want anything to do with it, nothing in the Bible. Don't think it's, you know, it's like it's the stories and they don't even care anymore. I look at what's going to happen uh, in the near future with uh, shuddering awe, I guess is the word for it, that um, bothers me because I hate to see it happen, but hopefully maybe I won't. See, then I will remove Israel from the land which I gave to them and this house which I sanctified to my name. Now, we are the temple, so he'll take away, well, he'll might take away our, our bodies if we walk away, which would be a terrible thing because we would end up in outer darkness. The, the bodies of which he sanctified with his Holy Spirit. I shall throw away uh, from my face the temp everything, and Israel will be for extinction and for a discussion among all the peoples, and that may be the same thing in the future with these giant uh, cathedrals of Notre Dame and the Vatican and so forth. People many years from now walk by these places, and they're all in dis disrepair, fell, fell apart, and so forth walk by and go, wow, what was that all about? Something about some kind of a man that walked on, on the water and uh, rose from the dead. I, we don't know what it's all about. And this lofty house, everyone traveling by it shall be amazed and shall whisper, and they shall say, for what reason did the Lord do thus to this land and to this house? Same with us walking away from God. People and Christians like, wow, what happened to him? And I've happened had that happen to people. One young man was going to do a lot of work uh, on the uh, Apostolic Bible, uh, put together a comprehensive concordance, and then one day he wrote me and said he wasn't doing it anymore, he didn't believe in any of this BS, and walked away. And they shall say, uh, because they abandoned the Lord their God, the one leading their fathers from out of the house of slavery, from out of Egypt, and they took hold of alien gods, and they did obeisance to them, served to them. On account of this, the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Um, do the Jews today think uh, just because they're back in Israel that it's going to be any different if they don't hold to God? Is he going to, do they think that, well, he's just a word, it's just a, a bunch of old stories in a book? We were able to come back because of our intellect and our brilliance and became a country 
And it's now we're powerful because of our military and our scientists and all of this. Uh, is this what they all think now? And it came to pass after 20 years in which Solomon constructed the two houses. Now we have a time warp. The house of the Lord and the house of the king, in parentheses, the Hiram, the king of Tyre, assisted Solomon with timbers of cedars. You can add that to your English derivatives book. 2747-2, Kedrini, Kedra, cedar, transliteration. Uh, Tyre, well, we have a, a, a map here. So Tyre is up uh, here, and d- down here is, um, you know, does it have Jerusalem? Yeah, there it is, behind my camera. <laughs> Tyre, Tyre, actually, Tyre. Um, Tiru, uh, Hiram was a king, Hiram, with timbers, and then timbers of pine, Xeles, woods of pine, and in gold, and in all his wants, all Solomon's wants, Hiram, that then uh, King Solomon gave to Hiram 20 cities, polis, metropolis, in the land of Galilee, way up north towards where Lebanon is today, the border, the border area. And Hiram came forth from out of Tiru and went to Galilee to behold the cities. Well, now, he wasn't to give away cities. They were to take these cities. But yet Solomon is giving them away. This is the beginning of the end of Solomon. And so uh, he came, Tyre, Hiram came down to behold which Solomon gave, and they did not please him. And Hiram said, what are these cities which you gave to me, O brother? And he called them the border until this day. And Hiram sent to Solomon a hundred and twenty talents of gold. And, and this is the matter of the plunder which King Solomon brought to build the house of the Lord. Now, plunder uh, is the word that it uses. Uh, it almost means that you're, you're taking it by force, and uh, maybe he did somewhat. I don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, but he got this uh, money and goods to build the house of the Lord and the house of the king and the wall of Jerusalem, building it all, and the Acre, the high place. You can add that to your English derivatives book, 191.1, Akron, Acre, transliteration there. That was to enclose the barrier of the city of David. Now, it's a lot smaller than Jerusalem today. And Hazor and Megiddo and Gezer. So they're up north. Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer. These cities here. He strengthened them. Uh, For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, ascended and first took Gezer, and he burnt it by fire. Piri. Uh, fire, pyromaniac, pier. He took it and, um, and burnt it. And the Canaanite dwelling in the city, he put to death. And Pharaoh gave it as a dowry to his daughter, and a dowry is um, money that is um, given to the sort of uh, alimony before the divorce. In case there is a divorce, the woman would have this money. Uh, uh, Pharaoh gave it as a dowry to his daughter, the wife of Solomon. Uh, And Solomon built Gezer and Beth Horon, the lower, and Balath. And nobody knows for sure where this Balath is. And Tadmor uh, in the wilderness. Tadmor is uh, way up here north in Syria today. And a lot of ruins, Roman ruins in Tadmor, it became a place where a lot of the um, people with uh, goods, with camels, and came down and brought their spices uh, in through the Tadmor area. It became a very uh, populous, large place. And all the fortified cities, which were to Solomon, and all the cities of the chariots, Armaton, Armament, Armaton, Armaton, and all the cities of the Ipeon, Hippo, Hippi, Horse, the horsemen here, and the Pragmatian uh, matters 
which Solomon engaged to construct in Jerusalem and uh, in Lebanon and in all the land of his dynastias. Dynasty comes from that word, his dominion. And all the remaining people from the Hittite and the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Canaanite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, and the Gergesite, and of the ones not being from out of the sons of Israel, their children being left with them in the land, which the sons of Israel were not able to utterly destroy them, that Solomon led them into tribute until this day, and they gave money taxed. And from out of the sons of Israel, uh, Solomon did not appoint one for servitude. They weren't um, to be servants like these other people, for they were men warriors. Andres uh, polemiste, you can add that to your English derivatives book, polemics, war of words. And there's and his servants uh, to the king and rulers and his third rank, Treci, Tri, comes from that three. And rulers, Archon, of his armaton, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the rulers were, and then the ones having knowledge over the works of Solomon, 550 dominating among the people doing the work. These were the rulers. And the daughter of Pharaoh ascended from the city of David to her house, which uh, he built to her. Then he built Nilo. Now, you can go on the internet and find out about the Milo, and nobody knows for sure what it was part of Jerusalem, but it's an interesting article in Wiki. So uh, you can go and find a lot of these places, Tad Moore, find out about Tad Moore. And Solomon offered thrice in a year whole burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar he built to the Lord. And he burnt incense upon it, the one which was before the Lord. Now, if we go jump forward to 2 Kings 15, 5 uh, and 2, uh, 5, and then 2 Chronicles, uh, second, yeah, 2 Chronicles 26, 19 to 21, talks about King Uzziah, also called Azariah, who wanted to go into the temple and burn the incense. And when he did, then uh, leprosy broke out on his body and they rushed him out of the temple because he was unclean. And he stayed in a house separate by himself the rest of his life. And his son became the king and ruled. Now, I don't believe that uh, Solomon himself burnt it here. I think it was burnt by the priesthood. And if otherwise, it would have been bad. And King Solomon made a ship in Gazion, or Ezion, Gaver, Gaber, the city being next to Eiloth. And we'll go up and we see uh, those, that area is down here on uh, the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba, this is called. Uh, the Red Sea splits up and another part goes over towards Egypt. Uh, that's where the uh, children of Israel went across. I, I, I don't know, maybe it was this one here. I'm not sure. Uh, no, it was the other one because it goes over further. And uh, they crossed over. Eloth and Ezion Geber. They're not exactly sure where Ezion Geber is, but Eloth is a city today in Israel. And a lot of people go down there because it's on the Red Sea and a vacation. upon the edge of the sea uh, of the extreme part in the land of Edom that was Edom at that time. And Hiram sent in the ship men, mariners of his servants, nauticus, we have nautical, comes from that. And there are people knowing to row the sea, where they rowed these boats with sails, with the servants of Solomon. And they came unto Sophia, and King James called it Ophir, Nobody's sure where this place is. You can also look Ophir in the Wikipedia and has all sorts of information on what it might have been. And they took from there 420 talents of gold and brought them to King Solomon. Well, they, some people thought it was in Africa and they made a movie 
King Solomon's Mines. Uh, somebody wrote a novel on it, and then they made a ro- movie when I was a child. Uh, and this was um, a novel. Uh, somebody made up the story. It's like the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, next chapter, well, one of the more inter- interesting, I think, in uh, this um, book of First Kings, the Queen of, and it's uh, actually Sava. We'll find out where this place was and who she was and uh, all the things that happened to her when she visited uh, King Solomon. So, hope you join us next video seminar. Till then, God bless.